Okay, thank you, Paul Louis, for this awesome presentation. So my name is Jean-Marc. I um, I work in a company called Mindlytics. I uh, I manage the data science team there, and so I will talk a bit about what we do at Mindlytics. So the first thing is the why of Mindlytics. Um, it's it's a company that was founded in 2015. Uh, it was founded on the belief that understanding uh, key moments of people is uh, very important for uh, customer knowledge. And we can define key, moment, key moments as two types. There are short-term moments, which we can call micro-moments, and ma macro-moments. So, as a matter of fact, Google defined micro-moments uh, as an intent rich moment when a person turns to a device to act on a need to know, go, do, or buy. So we're not specifically following that definition, but that gives an, uh, a good idea, I think. And macro moment, by extension, is a sequence of micro moments uh, on a period that can be several days, several weeks, or several months. So how do we tend to deliver that promise? Um, well, the main data that we use is um, you invest investigating real-time navigation of web pages, mobile, mobile pages, and in mobile applications. And by understanding how users, um, mobile users, or just people that are browsing the, the internet, basically. And when uh, they do this, we try to connect the dots and uh, try to qualify their state of mind at the current time. Um, so the, concretely, the data that we use is we are plugged into a bid request uh, data stream. So for those of you who don't know about this kind of data, it's um, every time that you go on a page with uh, an advertising, um, basically, when you're connecting to the page, there's a very quick process that is being uh, uh, done, and it's basically who uh, will uh, buy this particular space to put some advertising on it. Um, that is called a bid request. And so basically, AppNexus, which is uh, the company which delivers this data stream, uh, gives us access to all those bid requests. And by this, we, give, we get a, a sample from uh, people navigation on the web. Um, so to represent how much that represents, we have something like, uh, in France, 90 billions of what we call contact point. Uh, contact point is basically any advertising space on a web page per month and 300 million uh, IDs per month. So a very important thing to mention here is that we try to um, um, keep information about a certain person, but everything is anonymized through a cookie ID. Sorry? ID for the, the cookie, which is um, basically your identi identifier. Yeah, exactly. So um, what are the applications of what we do? Well, for the moment, we have two basic offers. Uh, the first one is that we are what we call a data provider. Basically, we help people that are trading advertising uh, creations uh, on web pages by saying, OK, maybe this space for you is highly qualified for you, so you might wa want to, to bid for it. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that um, following the, the very first idea that uh, 
we want to understand people through their navigation. We developed uh, a platform um, of customer knowledge where we say, okay, the people that went on your website, who, who, who are they? Uh, when are they going on your on their way on your website? Basically, it's a it's a way of understanding your audience, or even people that uh, you know clicked on a certain uh, advertising and so on. So um, to do that, we we have to understand navigation. So how do we do that? Um, well, first of all, we have to um handle the the whole web which is millions and millions of points into a much easier uh way which uh basically what i call the static comprehension of the web and mobile environment basically we want to to create a map of the web saying okay this place is more about soccer this place is more about I don't know, whatever, economics, this one is more about e-commerce. And then once we have this map, we have people that are, you know, navigating through this map. And now, in the second uh, way, we want to uh, comprehend dynamic uh, navigation. And uh, so that's an another topic that I, I won't uh, talk about uh, in this uh, presentation. And we'll stick to the f very first. Okay, so if we if we take a step back to um, what we want to understand, which is moment of life, um, we want to s understand. So, when you are connecting to a web page, what is your interest? What emotion can bring you to this page, and maybe your intent. And so, very naturally, your uh, you see three type of taxonomies that are um, that are being uh, uh, emerged, and that is a type uh, taxonomy, which basically is this web page um, e-commerce uh, site, is it a news website, and so on. Emotion, which emotion are you most likely to feel when you're browsing on this uh, web page, and a theme, which is okay. You might be on a e-commerce web page, but it might be about something about soccer or economics or politics and so on. So that's something that we kind of discovered very naturally that there were those uh, three type of organizations. Um, and so for this presentation, I will focus on the theme and emotion taxonomy. So the film taxonomy that we created um, based on what we thought marketing people from brands are willing to discover um, as source of interest. It's a two-level organization with actually 35 parents and 235 children. Um, it's one important thing to understand is that it's our own taxonomy, so we don't have uh, public annotated data or annotated data that we could create automatically. So we, we can't use a good old uh, supervised classification. So what we choose to, to use is um, to use a paradigm called vector space model. Um, basically, it says, OK, you have a topic which can be considered as a vector and then a document, which is, in our case, a URL, a web page, uh, which is another vector, and we try to uh, embed them in the same uh, space, and then we want a distance, to define a distance between those two objects to find uh, some, types of, uh, some type of match between those two. So, about the very first question, which was, um, the sh common space where we will put our topic and our documents. So there are two ways of seeing a web page. Um, one is what I call a vertical or semantic way, which is basically a URL. You have an 
HTML code, and it's basically a textual document. So you can use uh, semantic uh, uh, algorithms to um, encode it. Um, the other way is a navigational horizontal way, which is, okay, this is like a point in a graph, and people that went from this site to this site to this site, they probably didn't do it for uh, no reason. They probably did it because there was some sort of continuity in their navigation. So I will talk about this point later. Uh, but you can think of those ways as, I don't know if you're familiar with, with uh, hidden Markov models, but it's a bit like, you know, you have emission probabilities, which could be uh, considered as the vertical way, and transition probabilities, which is the horizontal way. So that's for web pages, and now we have the query, with, which is uh, the topic. And uh, we, then you have to define a set of terms that define your topic and set of web pages. So first of all, the semantic space, basically that's what we use as a, um, as a uh, chain. So we have to scrap the page and to do some pre-processing, tokenize it. Uh, we do some key phrase extraction um, with things like pointwise mutual information. I don't know if you're familiar about that, but anyway. And then once you do that, uh, you have to choose uh, some sort of representations. So you could use a sparse bag of words, which is basically you have uh, words encoded as one hot vectors, and then you sum all these vectors uh, of the web page. Then you could use, which is m a bit more uh, modern, uh, continuous bag, which I, what I call conti continuous bag of words, which is basically word embeddings. And uh, we use fast text because we, we found out that it, it works quite well. But then you, you, can, you can use more complex way to uh, compose words uh, uh, with each other. And so you can use a, a recurrent neural, neural network. Um, what we found is that for um, text as long as a web page, it doesn't work as much as a um, simpler way. So yeah. And then we do some post-processing, like smooth inverse frequencies, some sort of TF-IDF, and uh, discourse vector removal, which basically is the fact that when you're uh, averaging vectors from a sentence, uh, you get uh, another weighting of stop words, and you, you don't want that. You want to remove this effect. We, it's basically a vector that, uh, that is very much about syntax, and we don't really care at this point about syntax. Okay, so about the navigational space. Uh, so um, let me take a step back. So we talk about the semantic space and the navigational space. So the navigational space is, okay, uh, this guy went from that URL to that URL that, that, to that URL. We're not looking at what is the content of that URL at this stage. We're just saying, okay, maybe there's a connection between those URLs, and so we, we use the, the same uh, ID from um, from those who are familiar uh, distribution hypothesis, which is uh, the base of uh, algorithm like word to vec which is a word is characterized by the company it keeps. Um, here we could stale, state a URL is characterized by the company it keeps. A very simple ID to for you is like uh, if you know if you're familiar with uh, the, the Smurfs but, or les Schtroumpfs en français. Um, you, you have uh, in the bubble a lot of words that are replaced by uh, the, the term Schtroumpf, and then because of the, of the context, you can uh, uh, guess the real meaning of the word. So that's the basically the idea. And so we use the, the same uh, function as a word to vec in, uh, in one of the versions called Skipgram with negative sampling. And so um, why not a formula? So here's the, uh, the function. Basically, what it says is that this context must be close to this word, which is the target, and then it must be far from 
a lot of words, and this term is called negative sampling. Um, but f to to make sure that it works on web pages, it has it, there has to be some sort of continuity, and we try to constrain that by saying, okay, we we take this particular cookie. He has a session of URLs. Uh, we try to uh, only make temporal windows, saying, okay, if uh, he so another URL like more than five minutes later, that's not part of the same context. So some intermediate, Im intermediate results on the uh, navigational uh, vectors. Um, so here you have um, some sort of bag of URLs uh, made out of le, le figaro.fr, le point.fr, le monde.fr, eurosport.fr, so basically news. And then we see other domains which are close to it um, in some sort of distance. Um, and then here are more um, web pages that talk about, uh, uh, about jobs, basically. So yeah, it, it's, it seems a bit clean. And um, then, so now we have our space, we, which have a lot of good properties. Now we want a good distance, so there are a lot of possibilities, and we, we tried a lot of them. Uh, the, the, the first one, which is very easy, is, okay, you have a, a topic which is composed of uh, a lot of words or a lot of web pages. Uh, they all have their own vectors. You can average them, take their centroid, and take the distance between the web page and the centroid. So why not? It works pretty well. Um, if you want to take into account more uh, the the shape of all your uh, your your vectors, you might want uh, to use other things, and so we that's why we tried uh, three other methods. So group nearest neighbor is a, a method where you take all the the terms in the query, and then you calculate the distance between the document and every term of the query, then you either take the minimum of that, the maximum, or uh, the sum. So that works uh, as well, quite well for the minimum, especially. Lowering the space progression, it's, it's more of uh, our own uh, um, cuisine. <laughs> Um, basically, we have uh, this query which is uh, made of uh, several vectors. Uh, we compute a subspace of low dim dimension that is generated by the, uh, those vectors, and then we take the projection of the document on this subspace, and we see how much information is uh, captured in this subspace. Uh, and the final is an, um, called uh, Malanobis distance. Uh, basically, you don't, don't just take the, the centroid of uh, the query, but you take the centroid and the empirical covariance. And basically, um, if you took the Euclidean distance, you would uh, have some sort of uh, distance which is like this. That is, um, those lines are lines of equidistance, um, and it is spherical. But if you take into consideration the covariance, you could have elliptic things like that. And so that follows more the, the real distribution shape. What about emotions? So the goal of the emotion is to qualify which emotion is the most likely to, uh, the, the user is uh, likely to feel when he is on the, the web page. So we, for the taxonomy, you use a, a taxonomy called uh, the Wheel of Emotions of Puchik, which is a sociologue. Um, and um, the thing is that for this, it's, it's made of eight, uh, basically, eight emotions. Uh, trust, joy, anticipation, anger, disgust, sadness, surprise. Um, it's, it's very complicated for uh, a, uh, machine learning algorithms that are based on LP to be at this kind of level. So what we did is that, okay, let's not uh, take a dive into the semantic of the page, but let's uh, have a step back and say, okay, if you're on a soccer page, you're probably more into, you know, some sort of distraction or joy or, you know, you're, you're probably not in fear or sadness. You may be, but in general, you're not. 
Um, so from this idea, we said, okay, let's ask the people. And so we did a survey of that thing. Okay, if, if you're willing to go to a certain page uh, of a certain topic, which, which emotions uh, are you most likely to, fear, uh, to feel? And so um, we took the results, and then because we had the connection, we averaged them, because we had the connection between emotions and topics and because of the theme classification between web pages and uh, and topics, we had the connection between web pages and emotions by transitivity. So yeah, and it works pretty well. Um, last slide uh, about some limitations of what we did and some things that we have to work on. First thing is the quality of the scrapping. Um, basically, the web web pages and uh, HTML code is very noisy. Uh, you have a lot of things that you don't really care about that is the header, the footer, the, the banner, and, uh, and so on. You want to get rid of that and just take the, what is relevant for you. So that's a very open problem and it's difficult, but we are, we are definitely willing to, to try to solve it a little bit. And, uh, and also the need to update often the web pages because every day there are new web pages. Uh, just think about all the new uh, uh, classifieds that are created for like in Le Bon Coin or, or websites like that. So yeah, basically that's it. <laughs>